Hey guys, Russ here with bishopswest.com. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about phase four. Um, this will be really low level, introductory kind of stuff, but if you're just beginning to look at it, this might be helpful to you. So uh, let's just go ahead and dive in. Here I'm gonna pull up my phase four. Synth, click okay, throw that in, put that up there. And what I'm going to do to start is just kind of take everything down to zero. So click on the letter of each color um, to disable those. So I'm only working with the very basic one right now. Um, take the shape down to zero. That doesn't matter, but I'll zero those out. And I'll put in a sine wave. So now if I press a key on the keyboard, that's what I get. And to help us out a little bit, if you click on this expanded device view button, it shows you exactly what you're listening to up there, which is um, kind of handy when you're dealing with multiple waveforms at one time. So here we've got that. Um, as you saw, I changed this to a sine wave here. There are different form waveforms that you can use. That's double. Half is kind of interesting. Um, pulse wave, which to see what you would expect from a pulse wave, you could actually take the shape up like this. Um, and saw, same thing, if you have it like this, it's just going to be your sine wave, but if you turn it up, it's going to be more of what you would expect from a traditional saw wave. It's interesting. So, I'm going to put it back on sine. First thing I kind of wanted to do was just to show, um, to illustrate something that you might have heard people talk about before, and it's kind of hard to conceptualize it, well, maybe not, but this makes it really easy to see. When you're talking about recording, if you've been around people recording with mics at all, you might have heard them talk about if you have more than one mic, the mics may, might be out of phase. And so I wanted to kind of illustrate what they're talking about first. So I'm going to turn on my Y here. And same thing, I've got it on the sign. So now if I press this, okay, first things first, I'm going to take the ratio down. Um, and by the way, just to illustrate what the ratio is doing. Okay, it makes it higher. but I'm gonna take it down to one-to-one -one so it's matching what we've got with the red. Um, and turn that back down, turn that back up. So now if we turn the volume up, you can hear it get louder, right? That's because the waves are reinforcing each other. But over here, this is zero degrees, that's the phase. And by shifting the phase, we're shifting the timing of it. So I'm going to do that and shift it to 180 degrees and you can hear it gradually getting quieter and quieter until I get to exactly 180 degrees and it cancels each other out. You can see where the amplitude is lowest here, it's highest here, and vice versa. So they're literally just canceling each other out. We've got everything exactly the same volume wise and everything, they cancel each other out. So this is what happens when you have two mics that mathematically whatever um, sources you're recording, if you have the distance exactly wrong or exactly right, depending on how you look at it, the, the notes will cancel each other out because of the time difference between the mics and the signal. Okay, so just thought that was kind of fun. Um, put this back to zero and you can hear it got loud again double clicking you can just type whatever you need to there as well okay um, next thing I wanted to show you was I kind of showed you already the shape but what this can also do depending on which waveform you choose it actually distorts the shape so if you can see it's distorting um, the phase of whatever shape you use until it, if you get really extreme it's just like that okay but we can take it back okay 
Okay. So, uh, phase, the shape. The next thing that I guess we should introduce is talking about modulation. So now we've got this one waveform, waveform here, the sine wave. What the real power is here is being able to use other waveforms to manipulate this, to distort it, to modulate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my blue. And right now, there's nothing happening because I don't have this button. This is the source that's being used to modulate it, the blue. I don't have anything turned up here. But as I do turn it up, you can see that it's being, that waveform is being distorted. depending on what I have here. Maybe I choose this instead. So you can see that just depending on whatever shape I have here, it's being used to modulate my waveform over here. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is this is kind of the master control for the modulators. If I turn it down to zero, nothing's gonna affect it. If I turn it all the way up, then I get some interesting stuff that way too. Um, by the way, that's if you look at some of the presets in Phase 4, a lot of them make heavy use of different modulators. Um, just click on this, expand it, and add a modulator there. So that might be fun to do. Just add an, add an LFO or something that controls this. Okay, I'm not using those either. So you can do that. I'm going to turn that back down, turn that off. The other interesting thing is that you can use whichever one you have to modulate itself. Which can get obviously quite messy. But if you just need some noise, it's an interesting way to do it. Okay. So let's just throw some things open and see what we do. Maybe do this. Um, so, so far we've been messing just with phase. You can also mess with frequency a little bit by turning on this for stereo detuning. And then just adjust this however much you want to get some stereo detuning in there. Maybe not that much. Right? So that's fun. Um, then of course there's your normal filter stuff where you can, let's just take it all the way down to zero or take it back up depending on how you want to mess with it. Um, introduce some resonance, whatever you want to do. Um, and then down here also you have your envelopes, as you can see up here. We've got two envelopes. We've got the filter envelope and then the uh, amp, the amplitude envelope. So let's just play with this one, just a hair. And if you want to, You know, you can do all kinds of stuff that way. Um, 
And then finally over here we have kind of the main section where you can choose how much, not the main, but the overall control section, I guess you would call it, where you can control how much the mod is affected for each one as you're using each of these buttons and then each of the, even the little ones, the um, sub mod buttons, I guess. And same thing with the shape. So maybe the shape doesn't affect it at all, or you could choose to have it affected a lot. Same thing with the mod. So you see when I do that, nothing's affecting this sine wave anymore. It just becomes that pure sine wave because nothing's being mixed in. Take it back all the way up here and Right, all kinds of stuff you can do there. And then of course you've got all your effects afterwards, your um, delays, your reverb, whatever you wanted to add in there. Pitch, you can mess with, glide. Right, all kinds of fun stuff. So, like I said, I'm not going to delve too deeply into it, the mathematics behind the ratios, or um, probably there's a lot of other stuff that I'm missing, I'm sure. But I think that's enough to get you started playing around with it. Again, looking at the presets is a good way to learn. Um, like I said, when you look at the presets, there's all kinds of different note effects, audio effects that they've got, um, modulators, LFO, whatever. But it's worth looking at those to just just see how the people that designed these presets went about doing it. So I hope that helps. Um, definitely leave any questions or comments in the in the comment section below. Always look forward to hearing from you guys and um, hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you next time.